5.30 in the morning. I'm editing the vlog. Went up yesterday, I guess. Uh, but there's a really great sunrise, so I thought I may as well, you know. Moon, I'm there soon. I'm leaving quite early tomorrow morning. All right, I got yesterday's vlog uploaded and uh, it's gonna be live at 10 o'clock. I need to get back on this knife. We're gonna finish up this barbecue knife. Uh, but first, I need to set up the lawnmower. You know, when kids grow up, it's bittersweet. You're excited because it's fun, they're more independent, they're less effort as a parent in a certain sense. I mean, you don't have to feed them, you don't have to change diapers and stuff. But then there's also a certain point where it's like, you know, like my oldest, he'll be getting his learner's license this summer and he'll be allowed legally to operate a motor vehicle. And that's terrifying because I remember the day he was born. I remember how proud I was that I was finally a dad. I had a son and now I can drive. One thing that's really handy is that uh, they're finally of the age where they can mow the lawn. They've been begging to mow the lawn ever since we moved out to this land like almost three years ago. and I will mow the perimeters and then once that's done they can mow the center portion and kind of fill that in but I like to get the fence done just so that I don't worry about them running into it or getting too close to it or something like that so I'm gonna quickly do a little loop and then we're in the shop and make some knives dusty out there. Can you hear that? That is the sound of my boys mowing the lawn. I tell you what, that, that is such a wonderful, wonderful help to me. And then of course they get paid and stuff like that so it's, it's good for them too. You know, I think it's important to teach your kids how to work because that is one thing that will help them so much later on in their lives. You look at how many lazy bums are in the workforce right now and how frustrated employers are with those lazy bums. Teach your kids to work hard. Also, the great satisfaction is very important for them as well. We are going to get back to this knife here. I want this done today. questions about uh, my rotary plant and a lot of people are wondering now do I still love it do I still like it as much as when I got it? and I probably had it for I don't know four months five months and the answer is yes I absolutely love the rotary plant the more I use it the more I love it it's a very very forgiving grind when you're doing a convex grind and the thing I love about this as opposed to just having two wheels and space in between them I've got a backer belt that I can adjust the tension on so I have way more control over how much radius I put in there and then also because of the fact that I can get this sucker super tight I can put an aggressive belt on there and put a lot more force on it than I could if I just had two wheels without the belting in between it makes a huge difference I used to do uh, convex grinds just between two wheels and it can be done but there's a lot of patience and there's a lot of wasted time because I can put an aggressive belt on here and just push on it and it, it resists that deflection. 
And uh, if I had the same, if I had the same distance here, but without the belt, I would have to push much lighter and obviously grind slower. So the answer to the question I get quite a bit. Uh, yes, I absolutely love the Rotary Platen. sanding is going pretty good. Um, I hate hand sanding. I really don't enjoy hand sanding. Here's where we're at. We're getting close. Now again, this is going to be rock patterned and then as well as acid wash. But back to the hand sanding stuff. Now, if you are not on Instagram, I mean there might be other reasons why you wouldn't be, but you're missing out on a lot of great learning resources. Two weeks ago, I did a live Instagram with Mr. Jeff Fader. That guy right there. Yeah, that guy. And uh, I had put in one of my Instagram stories how much I hated hand sanding and he sent me a, a, a message saying, hey, I've got some tips. And he said, hey, why don't we go live and talk about them? So we did a live Instagram feed and it was in his story. He had some great tips on, on hand sanding and I'm starting to apply what, what he's told me. And it's making a huge, huge difference. I can't believe it. So I'm just telling you guys, some of you guys are resisting the old Instagram and I know they're owned by Facebook and Facebook's all full of clown donkeys and all that stuff, but really cool people, lots of content to learn on Instagram. I would strongly suggest you check it out. I need to leave this alone for one second. I've got to whip into town, I've got to get rid of our trash, and then uh, there's a couple packages I need to pick up as well as I need to drop off a couple of sanding blocks. Once I get back, we'll do some more work on this knife. Now, since we live out of town, um, anytime we have to get something shipped FedEx, I have to use, this is a, a business, and so I just uh, get all my stuff shipped here. So I'm gonna grab this and then drop off some sanding blocks. And now, if I understand, if I understand correctly, I think this is two MacBook Air computers, I think. Got some Slurpees. I'm gonna be Mr. Popular when I get home. You're not excited, are you? Yes, I am. I have Latin books. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. <laughs> not really. <laughs> excited, dude? Yeah. That's <laughs> sweet, hey, huh? Tell me all the words you know. I saw car. There's more coming. More apples? Well, there should be one more. What are you apple. doing, Henry? <laughs> so, the way that it works. Uh, here in Alberta, they've made some recent changes for homeschooling and it used to be that when we wanted resources, the books and stuff like that, computers or printers, we used to have to buy it ourselves and then submit receipts. Um, but they since changed it. Last year it was a lot more stringent and then this year they basically said that the government can't limit what resources or tools you need for homeschooling. So. We put in for a couple of MacBooks. Like we've always been using personal MacBooks for the kids to do their school, but they're doing more of an aligned program now where they have like online teachers. And so what that means is that they're gonna be spending, doing a lot of their school on the computer. And so uh, they provide free MacBooks. So that's sweet.
right, so we are getting to the final stages here. I kind of sort of put a just, not the full edge, but a bit of an edge on it just to kind of see, and it, I think it's got some, it's gonna be a good, good little slicer there. So what I need to do now, let me put my, my maker's mark on it. You no, know, this is something that I forget to do on a lot of my knives, and it's quite a shame, really. Every time you make something, you should be willing to put your name on it. I think that's a decent spot for it. Looks good to me. All right, so we just had our pizza. It is about 30 degrees, it's 32 degrees Celsius outside. It's stinking hot, so happy to be done for the day and uh, really stoked to have this done. In fact, I'm actually going to meet, this one of the very few knives that I actually uh, make and sell locally. I sell very few knives. In fact, I don't know if I've ever sold a knife to anybody in Strathmore before. And I'm actually gonna meet the gentleman this evening who had ordered this. So I'm really, really excited about giving it to him. Um, I'm not entirely sure what this is. When I pulled it out of the acid, that line wasn't there, and then I cleaned it up and it came out, but I'm gonna see how that goes. The one thing I do like with these removable scales is that if you don't like the finish, it's not like you've got your scales glued on, so you can easily enough take them off, redo it, whatever, but I'm gonna see, I'd like him to use it and kinda see what happens with this, how the acid stays on there. It's a fairly nice dark etch we got on it and I just lightly hit it on the top with a little bit of 800 grit sandpaper just to expose a little bit of the texturing there and on the handles. So all in all, I think this one turned out pretty good. I love the feel of this blade. It's it's robust and it's, it's quite comfortable. I think this will be pretty good. I'm really happy with it and I sure hope he enjoys it. And then when he wants it sharpened, I'm very, very close and I think it's cool to do like spa treatments on knives that you've made in the past so if he ever wants me to do anything to it, sharpen it up, clean it up, i uh, more than happy to do that. And it's just kind of the, the quality that you, the customer service you can give when you're making handmade knives for people. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna go shower and then we're gonna take this to uh, the gentleman that purchased it. So I just got back from town and we dropped off the knife. Martin, thank you so much for your support. It's really cool to meet you. And the coolest thing, something that I wish I did way more, was delivering knives to, to my clients in person. That was so much fun. I rarely get a chance to do that. So Martin, again, thank you so much uh, for your support, for your business, and uh, for meeting me. Uh, it was, I'm honored to make that knife for you, and I hope you enjoyed, and it suits you for years to come. But anyways, I think that's where this is going to end right here. Uh, it's Calgary Stampede right now. The Chuck Wagon races are on. We're going to go watch those and enjoy some family time. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Cheers. <laughs>